What up y'all DC Fago guy today we are going to be taking a look at ICP's latest album the fourth Joker's card of the second deck Fearless Fred Fury now I just got my physical copy today I have been listening to it on Spotify for the last week at least twice a day so we're definitely ready to drop this review we're going to be continuing to listen to the album at least twice a day most likely for some time so uh hot fucking album right now everybody's talking about it everybody's impressed blown away so let's go ahead let's jump right into this we got a lot to talk about and i'm going to try to keep it as, uh, as short as i can without it being too overly long if that makes sense so obviously that is the front that is the image we were given at hollow wicked 2000 2017 this is the one we've been waiting for let's go ahead let's slip this off because this is a slip case so for everybody who uh, watched my video about it possibly being a digipack I was wrong I'm glad I was wrong I would have been okay if I was right just throwing that out there get to the inside that is the art on the inside of the slip case we'll go ahead and flip it over because the track list is not here you got a fucking fist coming at you fight back open it up oh hang on there's some people that like to see the spine let's show the spine here there is the spine which i kind of like i like the way the clown is now different which they kind of did also on flip the rat which we will get into when we do our flip the rat review which will be on its own so you open it up here is the little promo code you get so you can go purchase flip the rat everybody's probably freaking out right now but i've already gone and used this code you can keep using it so if you don't have a physical copy of flip the rat and you would like access to get one there you go you're welcome i've actually already got it again um i got my copy today but it wasn't from psychopathic merch it was the indie exclusive one that i ordered so i already own it physically plus i did use this to order a second one plus the cd coming from psychopathic merch will have yet another one so um I mean, you got to go pay for the album, so it's not like you're absolutely getting a freebie. I'm just kind of giving you access to my code, so there you go. Anyway, there is the disc. Absolutely love it. This is pretty sweet, and actually, when I put this in to, to upload it, you can, like, it's, like, right here. You can, like, it, it kind of fucks with you. You're like, oh, shit, there's shit on the CD, but it's not. It's just fucking, it's just the fucking design on the front. I'll pop that back, uh, back off real quick. Show you the back here. There you can see a nice red background. Fight back 665. It looks like, what is that? That's... I don't know. I don't know what that is. There's something there, though. Dedicated to the butterfly, as is on most albums. Take the book out of here, like so. That's pretty sweet. I think this is dope, the way this was done. Bam! Look at that. Love it. So, this is, like, maybe the fourth time this has ever been done. Both Shangri-Las, uh, The Tempest, and I think... I think that might be it. But they put the lyrics in here, which is actually awesome because it helped me realize and Don Chaos actually helped me realize this too. I've been singing Fury wrong. Apparently the chorus is hey son, your face sin, like facing your face sin. Um heli retaliation. I for whatever reason thought and have been singing hates on your face son. I don't know how the fuck I even thought that made sense, but eh, that's the way I've been singing it since the single dropped. So I'm glad to know I can actually correct myself now. But plus, this actually is going to give us the opportunity to look through and try to figure out the name of the next Joker card. Because if you guys remember from my last video, it's it's named in here. So it's going to be difficult to do with this font. But we're going to try to go through and do that. I'm with most people now. I believe Bedlam Brothers. That's going to be kind of my official guess because they do have that brother sample throughout the whole album. And there's no other significance I could think of besides it being used to say, hey, the next album, the next Joker card is going to be some brothers. So I think Bedlam is, is definitely something I've heard in multiple albums or uh, multiple tracks here, not just Night of Red Rum. But I, I do recall hearing it other times. And actually looking at the de definition, Bedlam is kind of a scene of confusion. So uh, interestingly enough, that could work with a set of brothers so keep going here we're almost to the end of the uh almost to the end of the lyrics we get into the promo stuff which this actually got kind of spoiled for me i tried to avoid everybody's unboxing and reviews I, I i looked the other way when cpn started going through his book 
Uh, but Fago Lovers kind of reported on it. The homie Ryan Johnson, a.k.a. Mr. Ryan, he got his fairly early. Uh, not fairly early. He got it fucking two days before release date at his local record store. So he went through and showed everything. So I do kind of know everything going on in here, which is, it's all right. It's all right for me to actually have that spoiled. I just, I, I haven't looked through the actual book until I was able to look through it myself. So here we have Insane Clown Posse's Strums and Drums Acoustic Sessions that's going to be interesting and i think it's going to be interesting because i think it may work i think it'll work my actual actually my favorite alice in chains album is uh jar of flies and, and it's an acoustic album they took a big risk when they unplugged and did that album and i have a feeling this may pay off for icp as well the vinyl figures are coming out basically their version of pops don't know if i'll get into that or not and the big one right here for me that really got me hyped up because i made a video at the end of the year might have even been the beginning of this year icp's waxworks i made the video what's next for waxworks this is what's next for waxworks so i'm absolutely excited for that they have release dates here as well and then also we have the best of collections, some super villains. We got ICP's funniest shit ever, ICP's most unusual shit, and ICP's greatest stories ever. Which they've got to add Shimmer to that shit because Shimmer just came out and that's a damn good fucking story. Boom, there you got Jay and Shags. Then we get into our song credits, which surprised me. I actually, I learned about the producers before actually getting this book. But when I first listened to it, I was like, God damn, I didn't realize Straight Jacket was going to bring that much fire. But come to find out, the only full track that he produced was I Like It Rough. There's quite a bit of seven tracks in here, which, hey, th those tracks are banging. And, and seven is a banging fucking producer. Uh, nobody's fault. I actually, I had, once I, once I learned that it was produced by seven, I kind of had these vibes like maybe it was a leftover beat from tech Knight's planet but then the more i listened to it i was like nah you can tell this was constructed around this song which that's something seven's really good at doing is is you give him an idea for a song you want to do and he'll fucking build a beat right around it tech nine has stated this as well as icp so seven's amazing at what he does we get into our thank yous here along with the countdown two more left to go until we get into the fifth set of joker cards that has been announced we all know the the connection for 665 now will be a extra fifth five more joker cards so we'll go ahead we'll pop the book back in here we're gonna put my little promo code back up here again we're gonna put it like this for right meow this is eventually gonna go in my uh my shoe box so one last look if you want the code too late all right, we're going to put the slipcase back on and flip it over because we got to get into the track list, which is introduction. Pride, dignity, and an appreciation for life. Do you possess these traits? Or do you let... Red Fred? Red Fred! Spreading, spreading! Uh, 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 yes! Fred's there, both in life and in death. Yes! Fred begins with... Fury? No more complaining, not merely first. Blood gon' be raining, follow the hearse. Woke up a giant, too far they push me. Never than I am a scrub, but I'm no pussy. Swung a machete. West Verner Avenue. As soon as we find out, we're gonna ride down to West Verner. Satellite. And it's you, you crew jocks. So load the jukebox and do a few shots. Cause you ain't got a tombstone like two blocks. Bless me with the sight of a satellite. satellite. Seriously hilarious. We never really want somebody hurt. Game over. I go through thousands of friends. They all live in my headset. Reset. How many lives do I get? Am I dead? You put your mother so far in debt. She had to sell your grandmother's jewelry. Night of red rum. Red attack, tick tock, red rum. My dick bled some. Well, sip the blood spat with his red rat tongue. Then I opened the door. Scoping the whore. Took a pen, popped it in. Low. Are you clean? Cause I'm dirty. Wet blood stain. I'm that clamp. Triplex. Free murder. One more 
Eddie, are you there? You're not planning to harm any women, right? Remember, we talked about some nobody's fault. Here I go again, crawling through the endless tunnels throughout my polluted mind. All three walls of my bed shimmer. I stay in bed under covers, but fear forces me to see the closet doors open and shimmer point me. I swear she's bloody, and she likes that. A child dead in her arms, she takes freedom. Leave me floating in red rum and fake old cold I'm free to go. Free to go. I'm free to see. Beware. Beware. The members of ICP feel that the very next song, I Like It Rough. And I Like It Rough. What you know about reaching your peak and the edges of death? What you know about my climax causing your last breath? Well, hey, run away with them blood red lips. So it's going to be a lot easier to tell you the tracks that I did not like. And the only track that I did not like was hothead i don't know what it is about these kind of songs and, and and like cpn said manic depressive was the same way it's so fucking slow i don't like the way the beat is so slow i don't like the way it's just kind of monotonally sung over or spoken over i guess you could say it's just i just don't really care for songs that do this kind of shit it's too slow for me. So I've listened to hot I've listened to the album probably 15 20 times by now. I've only listened to Hothead twice. Every other time I've listened to the album, I skip it. It's just too slow for me. I don't like it. Everything else, dope shit front to back. I can listen to it. Everything is fire. I like it rough. I've only listened to it a few times just because and I mean, it's not, I'm not to say that it's too fucked up for me. It's just, <laughs> it's not something I'm fully into. So I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm not saying it's amazing, but I'm with everybody else. And it's obvious freedom is where the album was meant to end. And on that note, they could have taken, I like it rough and added it to flip the rat and had Beware be a, like an outro kind of thing and just wrap it up with the same everything that they had in the introduction as well as kind of the same voice in Beware but end it with Beware if you don't fight back and take advantage of your life you will meet Fearless Fred Fury and his fist will hit you with a fury you know something along those lines you know what I mean <coughs> I feel like they could have just ended it with that and that would have been absolutely dope but you know, I, I digress. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pick. I love the album still the way it is. Most of the times, I'll probably listen to it straight to freedom. Get on that fucking happy, good vibe shit. You know, I'm gonna fucking live my life. I'm free to do what I want to do, kind of shit. I don't know how often I'm gonna li uh, listen to I Like It Rough. I'm just straight up being honest with you. So I, I'm gonna say honestly, Hothead and Like It Rough are probably the two tracks uh, that are gonna slowly drop off, and I'll listen to less and less so red fred just exactly like that kind of track uh you know the title i'm gonna say it's the title track i mean the album's fearless fred fury but the character is red fred and this character track story track if you will beautifully defines red fred and what he is absolutely love it i'm fully behind the message of this dark uh, of this joker card now beautifully love it um Willoughby Rags was a little bit of a, 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 a sideball for me. I wasn't, or curveball for me. I wasn't fully expecting to hear Willoughby Rags in this album. I loved him when he did his little song intros in The Terror Wheel. He later came back to do it again a little bit in Forgotten Freshness Volume 4 and most recently in the Willoughby, uh, Willoughby Rags Magical Bag of Poop. So I wasn't expecting to hear him here on this album. And when it happened, I, it threw me off. Not gonna lie, it kind of threw me off, and I was like, well, why would they put Willoughby Rags in here? But then the way he kind of sums up the track Fury at the beginning, you know, how long are you gonna fucking take shit before you unleash Fury? I love it, dude. I mean, I love it. Just fucking love the way he helped sum that up for me. You know, he, he helped add that element of, 
you know, why is he fucking holding a crowbar? Like, is he about to fucking murder somebody? You know, Red Fred kind of explains the fist. And just that little intro from Willoughby Rags helps kind of explain the crowbar. So, you know, when you're living your life, Fearless Fred Fury, he's a living Joker card in you while you're living. But then you meet him in the afterlife. So in the living Joker card aspect of him, he's that fury of when shit happens to you and you just kind of fucking take it. He's that voice in your head like, dude, don't fucking take that shit. Fight back. Go whoop his fucking ass. You know what I mean? That's that's that part inside you. That's Fearless Fred Fury. That's Red Fred. Sometimes you fucking you break out in a fury and you fuck shit up. You fuck somebody up. So that to me that helps sum up Fury beautifully. Add that aspect of the Fury in his name. He's that living part of you when you're alive. So I'm gonna kind of jump ahead just because now that I said that, we gotta go to Nobody's Fault. My favorite track on the entire album. I totally love the, the meaning, the message behind this song. And so adding again to Fearless Fred Fury being inside of you and being that voice in your head, when you hear the chorus and you hear Shaggy Tudo batting his little ad libs in the back, man, that can blow you. That to me is him representing or uh, personifying Fearless Fred Fury inside you while you're living. You know, you're, oh man, fucking, I'm all alone when I get the bone. I'm all alone when the chips are blown. You know what I mean? So he's right there in your head like, dude, you're fucking down on yourself. Fuck that shit. Fuck them, you know? I, I think that helped tie it in really fucking nice. And Nobody's Fault is my favorite track just because it helped really convey that message of, you know, own your shit. If shit is, if your life is shitty, fucking own it. It's because of you that your life is where it's at. Change it. Go out and make a fucking difference. Do something about it. I love it. Absolutely fucking love that message. So... Let's jump back up. I'm going to kind of briefly do track by track. I don't want to take up too much time doing a track by track. Uh, West Verner Avenue, absolutely love it. Very catchy. Obviously a play on uh, Electric Avenue. I dig it. And I especially love We Gonna Ride Down to West Verner Avenue. And <laughs> uh, just I love it. I love it straight up start dancing on a fucking seat what the fuck it's definitely a lot stronger in the album um i'm not gonna lie to you when it first came out as a single <coughs> it I, I i was like most people it gave me that vibe from amazing jekyll brothers you know from terrible but i wasn't feeling it too awful on its own add it to this album beautiful Satellite, positive message. I've already kind of done some satellite visions on situations before this album even came out. And I absolutely love the the song and the message being conveyed here as well. Beautifully well done beat as well. They flow over it perfectly. Uh, seriously hilarious. We have to talk about verse 2 because you know that's what everybody's going to be buzzing about right now. It's obvious who it's aimed at. It's obvious that you know they still feel a certain way about that situation so the beat fucking banging love the flow icp it's a dope track what else can i say game over when i first listened to it it took a little bit to get into the samples were a little bit kind of like oh shit like scatterbrained me just a little bit hearing all the different samples from games but i dig it now it's definitely grown on me a lot um, Night of Red Rum banging from the first time I heard it. It, it goes right in there with the rest of the sagas, uh, the rest of the night series, if, if you will. Love it. Beautiful. Low? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. I love the time of the season. I think that's the name of the fucking original track. Yeah, it's the time of the... Yeah, that's the fucking sample that they fucking use. They are, I guess they basically just covered the entire song at this rate, but, you know... I've always kind of loved that beat, and I've always just kind of like rocked. You guys can't see me right now, but I'm rocking in my seat right now. I've always rocked that beat, so when I heard it, I, I was just fucking with it, man. And I love the way the beat breaks down and just low. Boom, 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 low. 
I loved it. I loved the way the song ended. I feel like the song was way too short. It's like maybe two and a half minutes. There have been a few people I've seen said they didn't like it. And it's like, dude, it's two and a half minutes. You can get through that, no problem. Um, Triplex. God damn, dude. What a great track. Absolutely fucking wicked. They, like, like I'm saying, man, they came with the wicked shit on this one. And I think that's what so many people were waiting for. Absolutely love it. I do have to agree. I think it was Beneath the Dirt said he wished that uh, instead of splitting it the way they did, we got a full verse from Machete Eddie. We got a full verse from Fat Hank. And we got a full verse from Dan the Man, you know. I wish we they would have done it like that instead of splitting it the way they did. But, I mean, it is what it is. It's still a fucking dope track the way it is. So, obviously we talked about Nobody's Fault. Loved it. Absolutely still love it. Uh, the message is conveyed. We talked about Hothead. I skip it. I don't listen to it. Too slow. Shimmer. Fucking Violent J storytelling at its finest. I know some people are guessing Shimmer as the as the next Joker card just because of the fact that it's a character. But I, I'm going to say absolutely. I don't think that at all. I think Shimmer flat out is like when you play into the Echo side and you see a Fiend card. He shimmers right there with like Damien and different fiends like that that they've talked about in previous songs and previous albums over the years. But I don't know if I'm alone in this. I already am excited to see Tom Woods' rendition of Shimmer. You know that's something that's going to happen, and it's you know it's something that needs to happen. So Tom Wood, if you're watching right now, I'm excited to see what you do with this character. So let's get on to Freedom. Freedom, the album closer, I'm calling it the album closer, conveys that message of live your life. You're free to do whatever you want to do. It's beautiful. It's positive. It's right up there with the world is yours off of Found. I love that track as well. Beautiful way to really kind of end the album. So, you know, we talked about that with Beware. Beware kind of should have closed out with an outro, if you will. And so we get into I Like It Rough. I Like It Rough controversial shit i mean when you completely look at the subject matter of this track controversial shit honestly this to me feels like it could have been an outtake like maybe they were thinking about making an outtake and they were just like you know what fuck it let's put it on the album and just say beware if you listen to this it's fucked up so i definitely think that was in their minds when they were listening to it so it is what it is. I don't know how much more I will listen to it. It's not a bad track, though. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, just kind of briefly going over everything. Absolutely, absolutely love this album. Now, I know I said this before with The Marvelous Missing Link, Lost and Found. I'm one of the few juggalos, and I say this because anymore it seems like there's more and more and more people coming out saying that Lost and Found were garbage, belonged in the toilet. I do not feel that way. I'm one of the few that actually loves those albums. Now, are, am I saying that they're better than any of the others or some of their best work? Absolutely not. But I didn't completely hate them. That being said, you know, Lost and Found is down here and Fred Fury is up here with with how dope of an album they are. I just, I like the positive messages that Lost and Found gave because just where I'm in my life now, I'm not an angry person. So I feel that positive, happy-go-lucky shit. And that's some of the stuff I, I, I kind of gravitated to a little bit on this album. And then I fucking gravitated to the angry shit because, you know, day-to-day -day life still makes you fucking angry even though you're living a happy life. So, like I said in those reviews for Lost and Found, if you did not like this album, if you still hold that mentality of ICP has lost it, they've lost their touch, they need to quit, then you need to quit, you need to hang it up because they'll never, they're never going to please you, you're never going to be a fan of them again because this album, for what every juggle out there is saying, fucking 10 out of 5 stars for this one. Blew it out of the park, guys. Keep this momentum rolling. And with that, you have Flip the Rat. So we will be dropping a review for Flip the Rat at a later date. I actually haven't really listened to it. So we're going to listen to it probably for a few days before we drop that review. Anyway, leave your thoughts about Fearless Fred Fury, the main album. What is your favorite track? What is your least favorite track? And why? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time.